So there's always that moment when you enter the gates. Lots of people, lots of crowds, music, food, and you really are entering another world. This year we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the 64 fair and the 75th anniversary of the 39 fair. The New York World's Fair of 1939. The 1939 New York World's Fair introduced you to the entire world, not just culturally, but also in terms of, of science and technology, of art and design, everything the world concentrated in one place. In Flushing Meadow in 1939-1940, you were coming out of the Depression. World War II was around the corner. So it's this interesting period of hope that would end up being deferred until later on. We don't think of them as being as far advanced as they were because we didn't see a lot of that technology happen until after World War II. That's a television camera. Holy smokes, does it work? Of course. It was here that we had the first broadcasts here in New York and people could actually see what television could look like. The theme was the world of tomorrow, and 39 was meant to be so spectacular that there was an inordinate amount of money spent on it. Prior to the 39 fair, this site did not exist. It was a wetland known as the Corona Dumps. It took one year just to clear the site, people literally working day and night. The fair had parades every day. Uh, there were fireworks every single night. There was so much money spent, there was no way that that money could be recouped. 1939-1940 was the world of tomorrow. The 1964-65 World's Fair was sort of the world of already. A lot of the sort of magic that a lot of people felt for the 39-40 New York World's Fair had sort of disappeared. Because uh, Seattle had held the World's Fair in 1962, New York wasn't an official World's Fair. And because of that, uh, a lot of countries didn't uh, have pavilions here, so they sort of filled in the gaps with corporate pavilions. The 64 Fair was really a collaboration of Robert Moses with Walt Disney and corporations. This little mobile is a scale model of our Tower of the Four Winds that spans at the entrance to the UNICEF Pavilion at the World's Fair. Walt Disney at the time was trying to get uh, corporate America involved in his parks to help pay for the development of Disneyland and, and the eventual Disney World. Uh, so he got the bright idea that he would help uh, build the corporate pavilions here. So there were four pavilions here that Walt Disney himself was involved in. Uh, one was the Pepsi Pavilion, which was the benefit UNICEF, and that was the It's a Small World ride. He also worked on the uh, Illinois State Pavilion, which had the great moments with Mr. Lincoln. He worked on the Ford Magic Skyway. The chassis for that were used on the People Mover. And the other one was the uh, General Electric Pavilion, which was the Carousel of Progress. At night, a million lights cast their spell on Flushing Meadow. The 64 Fair took place in the, in the space age. Then they can go prospecting for uranium. So everything had this very 60s look. Um, the 64 looks like a cacophony. The reality and the fantasy don't ever meet with fairs in general. I mean, they're really spectacles of what we want life to be rather than what life is really like. World's fairs are less culturally important today. At that time, you could look at pictures in a book or in a magazine, for example, but you could not truly experience another culture unless you went to a fair. World's fairs still happen. And whereas the focus was sort of on progress and the space age and things like that at one time, the themes tend to be more idea-based now. One of the problems with the U.S. pavilions recently, especially with Expo 2010 in Shanghai, is there are laws saying that the State Department can't use its own funds to build pavilions. And this has been interpreted to mean that corporate money has to be spent to build U.S. pavilions. A lot of the Chinese audience wanted to see more than just the sort of films that highlighted some of the products of the corporations that had funded the, the pavilion. Ni hao. One of the things that makes both fairs great and why they reside in people's memories is that you can still fly into LaGuardia and you literally fly over the Unisphere. Uh, you fly over our building, which is from 1939. And this building and this location is a locus of memory. 